Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, kind of lazy tutorial. <laughs> uh, last week I made a tutorial and it did pretty well, and so I decided that it might be fun to do a few more. Uh, my goal here is going to be to use and explain every node in Godot. Before I do that though, I should probably talk about uh, what a node is and how nodes work. We're also going to talk about how they differ from Unity in light of recent events. I think that might be useful. Uh, there was this wonderful little explanation I saw online that I decided to steal, and by steal I mean I made my own worst version of it. So here we go. Uh, in Unity, you have game objects, which one game object can have a whole bunch of scripts. In Godot, you're going to have nodes, which only get one script per node. Uh, I've heard people use the phrase uh, composition versus inheritance. I don't think that's very accurate, though, because I think Godot and Unity both have both of those concepts. They just implement them differently. Maybe this is a dumb analogy, but Unity is kind of like a MOBA. You have these game objects that are large and powerful, they have a whole bunch of scripts attached, and they do a large portion of the work. Godot, on the other hand, is kind of like a real-time strategy. You don't have these super powerful uh, nodes with a whole bunch of scripts attached, but you do have these formations of nodes that you put together, and these do a lot of the work for you. So in Unity, you have this one big node with a lot of scripts, and in Godot, you have a bunch of nodes together, each with their own scripts. So that is the high level. We're going to add a specific node to our scene now. Here we are with the large list of nodes. And I, like I said, we'll be coming back to this. But for now, we're just going to pick one node at random. Let's go with a character body 3D. So we put this in the scene. And uh, there's a warning. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to rename this one real quick. If I hover over this, you may actually notice that the character body 3D uh, explicitly expects a script. So we'll throw a script on this. We'll just add, export a couple variables. But notice we are going to define a class name here. And I'm going to do this to demonstrate inheritance. So I'm going to actually come back and I'm going to delete this node. And we are going to then add a new node to the scene. And if I press Control A to add and I type my player, you will notice that there is this class I just created. But not only does this class exist here, but everything leading up to it. If I come here, you'll notice this one comes with a script, but I can actually extend the script and make a new one. So we'll call this uh, sure. Um, so this extends my player and I can export some other variable. So you may notice at this point, I have uh, the my player object inherits from character body 3D, physics body 3D, collision object 3D, node 3D, and node. Um, and this list of inheritance is how these nodes in Godot are built. So if I come over here, you can see that exact same inheritance list. We have the new variable I just added. Uh, is this example extremely contrived? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> but this node is a my player object. That is true. It is also a character body 3D object. That is true as well. Down here, you have the variables that are defined in the character body 3D class, and which inherits from physics body 3D. It has some variables here. Same thing with collision object, node 3D. Uh, you have the transform, uh, the position, and rotation. So every node type that inherits from node 3D will have these uh, basic uh, values to them. So they all will have a transform, they all will have visibility. Um, and then the basic node, these are all common variables shared among all nodes. But so when people talk about inheritance in Godot, this is what they're referring to, is this long list of uh, various classes. And so if you familiarize yourself with individual classes, you know exactly what node 3Ds do and don't do. Uh, it makes it a lot easier when you're looking for, hey, where's the transform again? Oh, it's always in the node 3D or the node 2D. And with this example, you can see how inheritance can work if you uh, decide to create your own classes. So maybe you have something a little less contrived. Say you have like a weapon-based class, and then you have maybe a melee weapon, and maybe you inherit uh, like a bladed weapon from that melee weapon. Weapon. Um, you don't want to go too deep because you may reach a point where you want a weapon that maybe does both melee and range damage. And if you made those two separate classes, you can't inherit from both. So be careful with it, but you can definitely extend scripts. Um, and in this case with the My Player, it would be very useful to extend because it can't move on its own. With that said, like I said, there is a warning here. Uh, you'll notice this node has no shape, can't collide or interact with other objects. So this node on its own doesn't exist. And this really comes back to what I was saying with the uh, real-time strategy analogy. This can't exist on its own. I need to add a collision shape to it. So here is the object. If I add a shape to the collision shape, you notice there's a warning there too. Okay, now these warnings have gone away. We have an object that has a collision shape, but it still doesn't have a visible shape. So I may want to add a mesh instance as well. So here we go, mesh instance, same thing. This is not defined. We want to go, we'll do another box mesh. And here we go, there is a shape. Now I can go ahead and drag the Godot texture onto it. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna go down to the UV coordinates. I believe it is three, 
two and two and there we go here is a box with the kudos face on it but more importantly it has a box collision along with the box shape so this is your minimum formation for a workable body type um, not just character body but we probably want to detach the script first if i change this to say a rigid body then it'll actually be affected by gravity so we can go back to body type we'll do a rigid body 3d this one is now a physics object um, I'll go ahead and get a camera to the scene. You should be able to see that this object is affected by gravity and it falls out of the scene. This is just one possible formation, of course. We'll talk about more when we need them. Uh, but for now, let's jump back to the overall list. I ended up separating this into four categories. I have a node 2D, a node 3D, a control node, and everything else that doesn't fall into the other three. So a miscellaneous bin. We'll be looking at these through, I don't know, a number of different videos. Um, next one, I'm going to try to do every control node in a single video, but the 2D and especially 3D nodes, I don't think it'll be possible to do it that concisely. Since we are putting this into four categories, let's talk about the three base nodes and how they work and how they interact. So you'll notice the node 3D, it has just the transform and the visibility. This is, of course, a 3D transform with X, Y, and Z. A node 2D, on the other, other hand, has a transform, X and Y, but the control node is very different. It has a lot more settings here. So you have some of these anchor options. If I click this one, you'll see it's now taking up the whole screen. And this is because the control nodes specifically are used for menus, whereas node 2D and 3D aren't. Something I did in my previous tutorial, though, was I had a static body with a collision shape, of course. And I put a rectangle on there, which uh, is a control node variant. So here we go, color rectangle. We now have a rectangle with a collision on it. And the interesting thing, you might go, okay, how is this being moved around if the control node is not derived from a node 2D? You see, I have a transform here. If I scale this, everything scales. Ooh, uh, I'm scaling the wrong one. If I scale this one, you'll see that everything scales, including this control node. Well, it turns out they thought of this and they made sure that you can use control nodes with uh, node 2Ds if you want. So it, down here in the layout, there actually is a transform. Most of the time, you're not going to be modifying the transform because again, control nodes are designed for a different purpose. I just wanted to point out that you are able to use 2D nodes with control nodes. Uh, there is a little bit of mixing and matching that can happen. 3D nodes are kind of on their own because they're a completely different scene. Uh, it's pretty hard to put a 2D node in the scene if you're not using a viewport. So that's it. There's a high level and here's the tree. I will put the link on screen to the first video where we talk about control nodes. If you're watching this in real time, it may not be there for a couple days. Um, and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Definitely let me know what you think about this series. And especially if you have ideas for games I can make using these nodes. I'm going to be making a small game each time I use a few nodes. We're not going to just talk about one node per video. We're going to do a group of them. So if you have a group of nodes that might make a fun game, uh, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.